A geomagnetic storm watch remains in place, but on Saturday night, many people across North America, including on the first coast, did not see the Aurora Borealis. So what happened here? Well, first of all, this is what it looked like across our area on Friday. And really a good portion of the northern and southern hemisphere was able to see the northern and southern lights. But on Saturday, it was much weaker and a lot of people went outside and nothing materialized. So let's talk about what happened. Well, first of all, let's time this out with the K index. This is a tool, a index that we use to measure how much the auroras are active. All right. So here throughout the day on Friday, it was very low. This is normal. But then our first CME, the coronal mass ejection, that sun burp you've been hearing about, it hit the Earth's atmosphere and started to interact with it Friday night, just after sunrise in North America. And it created those beautiful auroras that we all saw out there. Now, this really continued throughout the day in North America and here on the first coast. Unfortunately, the sun's out, the sky's blue, you're unable to see it. It was all the way up to a K index of nine, but in other parts of the world, including places like Japan, Tasmania, and all across Europe, they were able to see it for a second night in a row. But then the sun started to set in North America. And look here on Saturday night, it started to drop down to a K index of six to seven. That is far too low for a good portion of the United States to be able to see it outside of a few spots in parts of Michigan and over towards the Dakotas as well. And even got all the way down towards these green levels, about a four or a five. Now, here's the projection, though, according to the Space Weather Prediction Center. This is kind of out of my wheelhouse, but the doctors out there all monitoring this say there's another CME that could arrive here on the 12th. That's on Sunday and stick around throughout the day. And if it sticks around long enough and an aurora does materialize and skies are clear, there's a lot of ifs and a lot of coulds and a lot of maybes in this, you might be able to see it again. It's not 100%, but there is still the possibility before this solar storm starts to wane as we go ahead over towards Monday, over towards Tuesday. You might also be curious, why is this so rare? We have to remember that the sun is, of course, rotating, and basically every so often you get those coronal mass ejections. Now, majority of the time it moves away from the Earth, but on occasion, kind of like somebody spinning around in a room and throwing a ball blindfolded, it might actually hit something. And on occasion, it does hit the Earth here. And then when you get them strong enough, that solar wind, those charged particles start to act, interact with the Earth's magnetosphere. That's what we call it. And basically it wraps around it and then starts to hit towards the poles right in here. That's why majority of the auroras, the northern lights and southern lights, the aurora australis, by the way, uh, appear near the higher latitudes. But the stronger ones, like we saw here on Friday, can even push further towards the south as it bends that magnetosphere. Also, a little interesting fact, for a lot of people, they saw those red colors out there. That is the aurora interacting with the atmosphere about 200 kilometers above our head, interacting with oxygen specifically, and even blue auroras, nitrogen and oxygen, uh, also being interacted with here all the way out towards those green ones. And if you see the pink, that means it's extra strong. That's nitrogen only about 100 kilometers above our heads. Very interesting stuff and a once in a lifetime event here. I'm sure people will be talking for many, many more years to come. That's why it wasn't really visible on Saturday. Still possible to see it yet again. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, First Coast News on your side.